Hey folks, we're back to doing a lot of reviews and we're going to be riding the hype train on some of these, I can tell you that. Starting with Keyforge. This is a little card game, it's an open little box that um, has nothing in it, but that is because the starter decks for this card game have not yet been released, you know, with the tokens and the various like, components you need. They will be coming out later this month as of November 2018, I believe. But what I have had is a few decks in advance for me to get to grips with this new card game by Richard Garfield. And most of you out there will recognize that as the same guy who made Magic the Gathering, one of the best popular games of all time in the trading card game format. This card game, though, is a little bit different than your typical format. Let me give you a few more details. Keyforge allows you to take command of a one-of-a-kind Archon deck and race against your friends to open one of the Crucible's hidden vaults. You will be racing against your opponent to forge three keys in order to open said vault. In order to forge these keys, you will collect Ember, and this will allow you to forge the keys providing your opponent does not try to steal them or capture them off you. You require 6 Ember in order to forge a key, and you will do this by playing various action cards and using creatures on your battlefield line in order to collect the Ember. Of course, these creatures won't get along with your opponent's creatures, and you can also send them out to attack directly. There is no player combat in this, unlike other card games that you might be already familiar with. Card play is similar to other trading card games, where you will have a hand of cards full of actions and creatures and artifacts, and you will play these on your turn. The twist is that you are only allowed to choose one of the three factions that your deck is comprised of in order to play those cards. So, for example, if you have a faction of Sanctum in your deck, and those are the cards you want to play, you will nominate Sanctum as a faction at the start of your turn, and they are the only cards you may play, discard, or use during your turn. The other cards cannot be used in any way unless a card ability says otherwise. So each turn, you must decide which cards are more important to play on your turn based on the factions that you have available to you and the state of the current battle line and ember situation. What sets Keyforge apart from other card games, however, is that each deck is unique. You buy a deck of 37 cards, they will comprise 3 out of 7 of the available factions, and all the cards will be distributed in a random fashion. So your deck will not be the same as an opposing deck, even if the three factions match entirely. And believe me, I have seen this in demos, this is the case. You will be able to buy additional decks, much in the same way as booster packs, but you will use that package deck as it is. You will not trade cards with other players, you will not purposely build a deck in order to be really good, you will simply take the deck as it stands and play with it, knowing that it will be in some way different from the opponent's deck. So that's a general overview of Keyforge, and I'm gonna get rid of this box now, because it's kind of pointless. Um, I keep everything in a little box now. And I have to admit, first of all, let's talk about components and art. The components are, they're kind of general. I don't have them with me because I don't have a starter set yet, but I did demo this at Essen, so I got to see the components head on, and they're fine. They've got some okay artwork on them, they're little wooden tokens, you know, like, sorry, cardboard tokens, and the keys are basically about, yeah, say yay big, and they represent your, effectively, the victory condition. Aside from that, there's some cards that depict, like, stunning a creature and stuff like that, but, yeah, I mean, the components are not, like, anything to sing home about, they are just necessary for the playing of the game. The artwork is pretty decent throughout, though. There's a variety of colours throughout all the different factions. I wouldn't say that the artwork here is, uh, like, anything stellar, but it's, it's decent for a card game. It's certainly not bad. I don't think there was any artwork in this game that I have seen where I would say, that's pretty ugly, I don't particularly like that. No, nah, the artwork is fairly decent. But the theme is possibly where this takes a little bit of a slight dive. Because if you listen to my overview, I was talking about an Archon deck and forging free keys and stuff like that. If you want to get into the backstory of this you know, this whole card game, then fine, you can read it in the instruction manual, but when you're playing the game, you don't necessarily feel like the particular faction. Some of the, the factions are different, but as, as apart from that, 
there's only so much in the theme that you're really going to draw from this game. It's not, it doesn't give you the same feeling as, say, Magic the Gathering, for example, where if you were to make a deck purely of goblins, you know, you are doing exactly what you would expect, like, the goblins to do, you know, quick hit and, front, you know, hit and run style attacks, very small, and lots of tricksy stuff. You know, with this one, that doesn't come out quite as much, particularly as you're using a random deck. Because in another card game, you would create the deck yourself. So it's like, I want to make an elf deck. Right, my deck is full of elves, therefore it feels like an elf deck. Here, because you're using the deck as it stands, you'll have a mishmash of creatures and free factions. The free factions might not even go well together. For example, one of my decks I've got here, I've got four of them, and two of the factions are in the same deck. One of them seems like a kind of like succubus demon type uh, thing, I think they're called Dis. And they're kind of like, well, I think like Sunesh actually from Warhammer 40k, that's the best comparison. And then another faction is Sanctum, which is kind of like, you know, knights and, you know, glory, like paladin style thing. I mean, that's, that was the, the vibe I was getting. That's a weird mishmash of creatures to put together. You wouldn't normally think they would go well. So don't think that you're going to be making tribal decks like this out of this game. You're pretty much just going to have to accept that your deck is basically a smorgasbord of random cards and you're going to have to make the best use out of it. In terms of card synergy, they're generally well balanced. I mean, there's usually something your deck will be good at and bad at as a result of whatever free factions you've been left with. But that's not to say all the decks are going to be balanced. I have four decks and I've played all four decks. And I will definitely say that there are one or two in here that I would definitely put in front of a beginner first before the other two because I feel they're just a bit easier to get going. Now, that's not to say the whole thing's unbalanced and it will not work. The rule book does have a system in play, particularly for casual play, but also hopefully for tournament play. Not that I'm ever going to go anywhere near a tournament with this anyway. But it allows you to handicap the opposing deck by way of something called chains. Now, you don't tend to see these often in casual play, but during tournament play, you will see them more often, and it's basically a handicap in your hand size, how many cards you're allowed to draw, depending on how many chains you have. And some of the more powerful cards will force you to take chains. But if you feel a deck is winning too much against another deck, you can just handicap them at the start of the game by giving them chains to begin with so they don't have as big a hand size. So there is a balancing mechanism in the game, but you are going to have to accept that you're going to have to play a few games to find that out. And of course, you're going to have to kind of agree this with your friend or whoever's playing the deck if you're playing casually. In a tournament, there's a different story, but casually, you're just going to have to kind of play them against each other and see what happens. For me, I'm not that fussed about handicapping. It's a case of, well, it's a different deck. I'll play it. You know, I'll, I'll happily just buy a booster pack of this and just go, hmm, I'll take this deck. Let's see how this deck works and hope that I get a card that I've never seen before. Certainly, you're not necessarily, I mean, if you want to try and collect everything, you can, although good luck with that. But it's quite cool to open up a new deck and go, I recognize these cards from that site. Oh, hang on, I don't remember this dude from the uh, Logos faction. What does he do? And you get that, you get someone new, and it could just be a tiny little creature, it could be a new item, or it could be this huge, giant, ogre bashing giant creature or whatever from another faction. And it's cool to see those even when your factions are similar to the opponent. So I am um, the demo game I played, uh, uh, the guy opposing me, I think uh, I think it was Mars or a different faction, but he had like a like a king ape, like giant ape or something, and it was like a nasty creature to get rid of. But my deck had Mars, I didn't have that. I had something else. And then there was two other big creatures which we both had. So it was cool to have those, those differing styles of decks. And it's cool that regardless of who you play against, no game will ever feel the same. You know, unless they're using the same deck all the, all the, all the time. But, you know, if I decide I go to dice um, any time during the week and somebody I've never met before brings a Keyforge deck, I will have no idea what's in that Keyforge deck. It will be completely different to what I expect. That's a good thing. Now, of course, how does the game actually play and how does it feel? Is it fun? Now, a lot of people are going to make comparisons to Magic the Gathering, and I seriously suggest you don't, because there's a lot of differences between this and Magic the Gathering, even though it's the same designer. If anything, I saw more parallels, I think, with Hearthstone 
than Magic the Gathering. There's similarities to both of them. It's almost like both of them have inspired this game, but this definitely feels unique enough in its own right that if you play either Hearthstone or Magic, you could easily pick this up and it wouldn't feel like those two games. It's different enough to be its own, you know, its own thing, and that's always a good sign. Now, this deck I seem to have got the, uh, hmm, yeah, there it is, yeah, so I'll have to separate the decks out so I can hold it better. So, for example, this is one deck. You have a collector's card, which uh, basically gives you your identity as well as a checklist for the cards. Uh, I apologize for any noise out there, that is fireworks season after all. And this one gave me, what did it give me? Sanctum, Dis, and Untamed. And this deck, you know, seemed pretty good. I've got some armored knights, I've got some annoying demons that like to steal stuff off the opposing player, and I've got some untamed creatures, which are just generally nasty and beat the living snot out of the opposing thing, but also collect a lot of ember. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this deck, and this is definitely one of my more powerful decks. But this is the example of what you get. So you effectively have, you know, not a ton of cards, you know, the deck, you will see each card, you will understand how they work, so it's not like you have to deck build a 60 card deck in advance, which is always quite tricky to do in LCGs and TCGs anyway. And, you know, you'll have a hand of typically about six cards at a time, unless there's some effects that allow you to draw more. But, so you're not looking at too many cards. But the best thing I love about this game, and I really do love this about it, is not the uniqueness. That's a cool gimmick. I like it, but that's not the main reason I like this game. The main reason is that choosing the faction at the start of your turn, that mechanic I love. I don't know if it's in any other card game, I don't recall ever seeing it, but I love it in this one. Because for example, I'm looking at a hand of six cards here, and I've got three Sanctum cards, uh, two Untamed and one Dis. So you might think, well, when you choose Sanctum at the start of your turn, you've got three cards. They're not necessarily useful. I might need to hang on to them for the moment. I might really need to play this discard because it might stop my opponent forging a key. But then I also have a couple of untamed creatures on the table and one of these cards I could play, but I also want to use the creatures out on the battlefield. So you're constantly having to make this choice every turn as to which faction are you going to choose to use the cards from. And it's a never-ending like cycle of that decision because every one of your turns, you must make that choice. And I love that choice because it's a bit like, um, kind of how I describe Hanamakoji, where you'll, you'll make a decision and it probably is the right choice, but you'll hate making it. It's a bit like that in this. It's like, I, I figured this is the right choice. I should play my Sanctum cards. I really want to play this creature though, and just like I really want to use that dude. And you, you'll hate yourself, but you'll be glad of the choice as well. And that makes a lot that's the main crux of this game that choice because it can make or break your strategy. The gameplay of Keyforge takes about say 45 minutes typically. You can do a game in quicker time, but I would say for your first couple of games, you're going to be learning the rules, getting used to it, and a game could drag on as long as 45 minutes. But once you're a bit more comfortable with the game, you hopefully should be able to chuck out a game within about 30 minutes. I don't think you'll be doing it much quicker than that anytime soon, uh, but certainly 30 to 45 minutes is not too bad for a game. The longest it should take you is probably about an hour, and that's your first learning game with someone who's maybe not comfortable about learning card abilities, you know, because you got to be careful who you put this in front of. I would certainly say it's not gateway level. Um, it's... Magic, I feel, is a little bit easier for people to get into if you bought like the dual decks and that. This one requires a little bit more strategy and a little bit more adaptability with the cards. Because obviously you don't know what's in the deck. You're just kind of going with the motions. So you don't know how well your deck works. And even if you do, you kind of have to adapt a lot to the situation with what cards and factions you have in your hand. So I wouldn't call this a gateway game by any means. I don't think it's a heavy game. It's just one that maybe I wouldn't stick in front of a new gamer straight away. But anybody who's comfortable with card games, trading card games, living card games, that sort of thing, this would go down pretty well. The rule book is fairly clear. I didn't have much in the way of ambiguous information to go by or rules that I had to keep checking. There is kind of a sizable glossary of terms, but it's at the back of the book. You can easily find out what those terms are and continue with your day. You know, the, the actual turn sequence is relatively straightforward. In fact, this game is probably one of the most flexible card games I've ever seen because it pretty much tells you you can play, use, discard, and pretty much do what you like as long as the cards of that faction are the ones you're using. So you can go, I'll play this creature, then I'll play this action, 
you know what, I feel like playing another creature. And I can play this action now. So you don't have to do a phase of must play creatures. Now you must play actions. Now you must discard cards. No, it pretty much just says, you got that faction? Go nuts. And that's really cool because it makes it easier for me to teach the game because I'm always getting asked questions like, when am I allowed to play creatures? You know, when am I allowed to do actions? Now, you know, like, go nuts. You've chosen an untamed faction, go play your untamed cards. And the combos that you build is what you'll gain from learning, you know, playing multiple games. You know, you'll learn when, when you should do certain things and when you shouldn't. So it's a, it's got a good learning curve. Not particularly tricky. I, I feel that this is certainly easier to learn than some of the other like big living card games. You know, we're not talking kind of, I'd say this is a little bit harder to learn. I don't know. It's, a, it's on par with magic in terms of its learning curve because magic with the dual decks can be easier to just get into and play. But if you want a deck build with magic, that takes a bit more strategy and thinking. This one doesn't have the deck building element but you have to think a bit more on your feet and adapt. And that's probably one of the reasons I like this game a lot is because that feels more like a tactical card game rather than I'm building up a strategy here. No, I have to react to what the opponent's doing and what is in my hand. And that's always something I enjoy in a lot of games. That tactical adapting is part of you know the overall gameplay. Um, so yeah, I can't really say much more about it. Keyforge is a solid card game. Um, I don't know if it's going to like take off like a house on fire. I really don't know how these tournaments are going to play out, but personally, I don't really care. You know, I grew out of the tournament scene with Magic the Gathering because, well, to be fair, that is the only game I have had death threats for winning a tournament in. I kid you not. <laughs> I used to know somebody at university who seriously took Magic the Gathering way too far. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Mainly, I just like to play it casual. I can literally, what, buy a few booster packs, have five to ten decks, and I can literally just chuck them about and just say, you want to learn how to play Keyforge? Cool. I'll take this deck, and you take that deck. Nice and straightforward. Not not very expensive. This is, you know, if you literally just want to grab one or two Keyforge decks and go at it, this is probably one of the cheapest card games to get into, and that's certainly a plus. And, yeah, all in all, I really like it. You know, it's it's... Really cool. I feel maybe the card selection so far, and bear in mind I've only had four packs, is a little restricted because I'm seeing a fair bit of repetition, but I don't know how many cards are actually in the set in general. I mean, what's this go up to? Uh, 368 is the highest on this particular sheet, and 259 is the highest on this particular sheet. So maybe in the future they'll release expansions and there'll be more decks, you know, more like cards to see that would be pretty cool I don't know how that's going to work with combining old and new though but I don't know we'll have to see just don't put a deck building element in I really don't need that but yeah all in all I like it it's a good casual card game for me personally probably I do really quite like it though so I'm I'm gonna give this one a solid eight I you know I don't think it's the bee's knees but I've enjoyed my time with it. I want to see how it develops and maybe my rating could go up in the future as the whole tournament play thing sort of pans out or maybe more cards come out for it. But overall, I think that if you've got an interest in this game and you've played things like Hearthstone and Magic and just various other little card games where you've got to think on your feet, I think this will be a solid hit for you. Certainly give it a try when it hits the shots later this month, hopefully. So that's it for me. I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. And regardless of whether you like unique decks or whether you want to deck build and you miss it, just remember, still only a game. So no death threats, please. All right, take care. See you next time. Surely.